Uh, we're gonna get right into it. This is, I think, a heavily requested class, um, something that many people are going to be uh, needing to know, especially if this is their first experience going through a bull run. They've held on through this accumulation, bare, boring phase of crypto. And uh, now when profits are uh, beginning to kick in, what do you do with those profits? There's a lot of things to consider. Um, Toby and I have been able to navigate bull runs in the past, I think quite successfully, not to toot our own horn, but uh, we are happy to pass on whatever we have learned in that uh, journey uh, onto you guys. Speaking of diversifying the countries that you're interacting with, say you guys are crazy like us and you want to use your profits, not crazy, crazy smart, um, to diversify, maybe get a second citizenship somewhere mm. or invest in property, you know, uh, in a different country or like make, make some changes according to the profits that you're making and the goals that you have for your life. If you have the I highly recommend obtaining a second citizenship if you ever have the opportunity. If anything, just for a backup plan so you can tuck it away and know that you have a second option should you ever need it. Um, but if you'd like to purchase things like this or again, to pay off your debt, you'll most likely have to trade into fiat. That is the sad state of affairs for us in the crypto space is that, you know, uh, Things like property, things like citizenships, things like debt, they all need to be paid in terms of in fiat. So that's just how it is. You can't you can't pay your credit card bill in Bitcoin. But we think. did pay our lawyer. Yes. And... I will, yeah, uh, I'll get into that. Okay. <laughs> um, so if you're talking about shifting your profits from crypto into fiat, that is where a lot of bottlenecks will happen, especially if you're dealing with large amounts of profit. So you need to think about how will your bank uh, react to you making transactions with them and a cryptocurrency exchange. Uh, I think you it would definitely be beneficial for you to speak to either the bank that you have right now or go to any banks that you have in your area and talk to them, feel them out, see how they feel about cryptocurrency. So then you're not blindsided where you're all of a sudden cashing out all this crypto and they all of a sudden decide to close out your account because they're not into it which I think a lot of banks are turning around to that, but you never but know. It, it does happen. It's worth asking and it's worth uh, getting a heads up about. What you need to be considering for that is which exchanges are most lenient for you. Unfortunately, if you're a US citizen, your KYC experience is pretty much gonna be the same no matter which fiat to crypto exchange you decide to make an account with. Um, uh, well, really quick, when I have to sign up on a KYC, you know, website, um, they asked me first, are you a US citizen? And then for everyone else, here's an easy form. Yeah, pretty so much they make like... you check and confirm that you're not a US citizen. So then, you know, that's them checking their liability off of, you know, the US. They know what the, how to categorize you really, uh, which is unfortunate, but it's true. Um, so my recommendations for, uh, for a fiat on-ramp centralized exchange, if you have to go through it, are Kraken, because they are one of the few, if not the only that I know of, centralized exchanges that deals with KYC information in-house. They're not exporting it to some random third party that you're not aware of. Um, and also Bitstamp, because at least for me, I don't know if this is true for US citizens, but for me, for non-US citizens, Bitstamp has doesn't have any withdrawal limits once you go through KYC, which again, if you're not a US citizen, it's not that bad of information. It's not so intrusive. It might be different if you're a US not citizen. Not at all. It was actually really easy. Yeah. <clears throat> but so, and Bitstamp yeah. and Kraken are both, I think, very, re uh, very reputable exchanges. Bitstamp's been around for a very long time. So and they've, neither of them have experienced yeah. really major hacks. Um, so things do, that's something you need to consider is withdrawal limits and the amount of KYC you are willing to go through to uh, uh, lift those limits. Um, if you're talking about huge profits, then you should, I think, definitely consider and you need to move it again from crypto to fiat and you're like one of those big guys, check out over-the-counter trading, OTC, it's what all the whales do. 
It's what everyone's talking about, what the whales are doing. Um, and what that is, it's really, it's a private sale that you or, are organized uh, between two people and there's usually an escrow service to make sure that all parties are uh, doing what they need to be doing. Um, and you can organize the price and the terms and all of that. And it's a private sale, so it doesn't occur on a public exchange, so it doesn't affect the price so much because it's not um, on the open market. Uh, Kraken offers over-the-counter trading, and again, because I'm familiar with that exchange, I am assuming that they are also doing that quite well as well. And they work with many different cryptocurrencies, like Bitcoin, Ethereum, I remember Monero was on there, which is great. Uh, and yeah, so if you're, if that's, if that's what you're, going to be needing to do, maybe uh, consider that. But over-the-counter trading, especially on a centralized exchange or really at all, any over-the-counter trading desk that offers those services, they will require a lot of KYC AML information, regardless if you're a U.S. citizen or not. Uh, this is for businesses or for like high net worth individuals. I think Kraken said they, they take orders up to like $10 million. So... If that's what you're dealing with, uh, just know that. And you know, maybe you don't care about KYC. You don't care about putting your information out there. Uh, you don't care about the governments knowing your whereabouts of the crypto. Then uh, I think that's a legit option for you. And I should say also going back to the citizenship thing, is yeah. a CBI Citizenship by Investment Program. So like, consider getting one earlier than rather than later. And let me tell you why. So. Um, I expect this bull run to be massively bigger than the prior one in 2017. Yeah. More people, more, more money. Yeah. Okay, so with that said, um, you know, if you have 100 grand right now invested or even 50 or 20 grand, I mean, I, I'd expect you to be, to, I mean, Do make a lot very of money. Well. Yeah. So in other words, you're going to have to pay a lot of taxes on that. Yeah. So with that said, um, you know, if you do have over $2 million dollars, and you do decide to leave the United States, yeah. you will be re you will be what you called, call a covered a expatriate. Covered expat, yeah. yeah. And so what that means is you're going to pay 30% of your entire net worth, and this is after you just paid your taxes. Yeah. And so keep that in mind. Like, it's, it's, maybe do it I earlier believe, than, than later. Yeah, If exactly. It's regarding that it's two million dollars of like your net worth, or if you've earned a hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year for the past three years or five years, you would also be co uh, qualified as a covered expatriate, and that means you have a lot of tax duties um, after the fact, I believe as well. Talking about people piling in uh, to cryptocurrencies during a bull run, you know, everyone's hearing it on the news. <laughs> Fox News, CNBC, whatever, they're all saying, oh, Bitcoin, Bitcoin, your grandmother is talking to you about Bitcoin, your mom, okay. like everyone is talking about Bitcoin and you don't have an account on an exchange where, again, your plan requires you to get into fiat. I suggest that you get your account set up now uh, because in the past, like Binance was brand new. Um, but hopefully they've worked out the kinks so far. They can they can scale a little we'll bit see. better. They've shut down the ability to create new accounts during the huge rush. Uh, so also KYC, they have to check that. And if they're flooded with people, that could also delay it. And that might you know make you miss time something, especially if you have to do something very quickly. I think it's just uh, smart in general to be well prepared and get all this stuff set. You can be familiar with the exchange, know exactly what you need to do, and then when the time comes, you can do it and not be stressed about trying to figure out how to work the exchange or you know why your account isn't working or why your KYC hasn't been approved yet. Familiarize yourself with decentralized exchanges. Maybe you are struggling to have your orders filled on one exchange and you have to like, I don't know, do something crazy like use a bunch of different exchanges. Decentralized exchanges, I think, would be very valuable for you to be familiar with. Again, when it, I mean like, it can be frantic during a bull run. You're fighting your greed. You're fighting the excitement of seeing all these profits coming in. Um, it can, and so it's, you're not going to want to sell it. It's, you're it's not going <laughs> to. Right now, that's but why you need to write that list down and stick with it, yeah. regardless of what, how your emotions feel. Yeah, but it, yeah. I think this is all a very valuable time for you to be spending getting familiar with things, making maybe just super small trades. Just get familiar with it so you know what to expect. Yeah. Um, 
speaking of buying property, buying second citizenships, uh, now is also a good time for you to reach out to any lawyers you might need to work with uh, for certain situations, or again, real estate agents you might need to work with. Maybe you can take the time now to find one that actually accepts cryptocurrencies at, uh, for maybe their fees that they offer. Maybe you can find a uh, property seller that will accept Bitcoin uh, for the terms of the agreement of buying the house. Uh, I don't know that there's any citizenship in uh, 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 options that take any governments that will be taking Bitcoin or cryptocurrencies as a form of payment. If they were smart, of course they would. But this is a time where you can get them warmed up to the idea. Maybe say, well, why don't you? And, you know, maybe be a little a little crypto uh, evangelist and help people figure out why. Um, and then you can help yourself as well by using, you can pay at least a little bit in crypto and avoid your exposure to fiat in that way. 